So a total solar eclipse day for some people in the States, not us. And while we won't see the moon totally block out the sun here in the Bay, we are still able to see a partial eclipse and it begins at 10 14 a.m. with the best viewing happening at 11 13. And if you're one of the lucky ones traveling to a different state that's under the path of totality, you're most likely going to get an experience that you were never going to forget. It'll be memorable because that is the unique part in which I'll say, hey, you know what? I got to see that and I know exactly where I was when I was. Now, the next solar eclipse in the lower 48 is set to appear in 2045. How old are you going to be at that point? Though parts of Europe will actually experience it in just two years. So joining us from Indianapolis, a city that's under the eclipse path of totality, is CBS senior space consultant Bill Harwood. Welcome, Bill. So first off, for those under or outside of the path of totality, can you describe what people are going to see out there? Sure. You know, it, it's interesting. A partial eclipse is lots of fun to watch, even if it doesn't go total, because you'll see the moon start to take a bite out of the sun. The sun will become crescent shaped, which is utterly unique. But as you know better than I do, probably, you don't want to stare at that with your with the unaided eye. You absolutely uh, want to use eye protection because even partially covered, even 98 or 99 percent covered, it's still thousands of times too bright to take in with your eye without risking permanent eye damage. So you need some of those cheap, you know, solar eclipse glasses, you know, some of these guys, you know, to take a take a good look at it um, or a little pinhole camera, you know, just punch a tiny hole in some cardboard and project an image onto a piece of paper. Definitely worth going to the effort, though, uh, to take it in. It's going to be fun. Well, we've actually brought up those special sunglasses meant for this occasion. What do they actually do when it comes to helping the view? It's basically darkening the sun by something like 99.999%. I mean, you really can't see anything through those glasses except the sun. Uh, but they lower the intensity of the light enough to where you're not getting the kind of intense radiation that will uh, hurt the damage the retina of your eye. And that's what's critical here. And, you know, it, it really isn't just because it's an eclipse. If you go out on any day and stare at the sun, you risk eye damage. It's the same thing. It's just people look at it longer during eclipses. And so you risk damage in that in that sense. So you got those little glasses, use them. All right. Well, that makes sense. And one last question for you. How do scientists predict the pattern behavior of the moon? You know what? It's really interesting because you got a bunch of things going on. You have to take into account the Earth's orbit, Earth's rotation, mm -hmm. and then the moon's orbit, which is tilted slightly to our equator. And so all of these things are moving at the same time. But it turns out astronomers literally uh, you know, 2,000 years ago, we're able to predict upcoming eclipses. So it, it's kind of mind boggling. Just, just by repeatedly watching and keeping notes, they could figure out a pattern and we're able to predict these things. So uh, now they do it with computer accuracy down to fractions of a second, uh, which is all, it's all pretty interesting. I've got an iPad here. I was looking at your eclipse on my iPad this morning, you know, and it'll model it just as if I'm there. So it, it's really quite amazing how all that works today. That is awesome. We're going to have to find that app soon. Thank you so much, Bill. And of course, make sure to wear those protective glasses. And of course, you can join us today for Eclipse Watch, our special coverage of the solar eclipse. It all starts at 10 a.m. streaming on CBS News Bay Area. And you can find us on the free CBS News app or on Pluto TV. So